In 2018, we investigated one of science's greatest mysteries, the origin of the moon. It's been a riddle since the Apollo astronauts made a surprising discovery. That was really tricky working on this slope and this soft material. Sure is. Rocks from the lunar surface reveal that the composition of the moon and Earth are very similar. The two worlds are essentially twins. But how is the moon made of such similar stuff as the Earth? When we look at other moons, they're not made of the same materials as their planets. And so something different happened here to make our moon and its distinct characteristics. To discover how the moon and Earth are so alike, we need to go back to the violent early solar system. The early solar system was incredibly smashy. Things were just running into each other. Objects that had formed were broken apart, reforming. It was a chaotic inner solar system. Out of this chaos, planets formed, including the Earth. But the violence wasn't over. As the Earth is forming, it's still being bombarded by all the leftover debris in the solar system. And so it's constantly being impacted. Small, rocky debris bombarded our young planet. But there was an even greater threat to the young Earth. Small protoplanets also orbited the sun. One was on a collision course with Earth. Four and a half billion years ago, a 4,000 mile wide protoplanet called Thea hit the Earth. The impact was only a glancing blow, but the collision still blasted over 81 million trillion tons of debris into space. In the classical view of how the moon formed, something the size of Mars has a glancing collision with what would have been Earth thrown off a bunch of material that built a big disk of debris out of which the moon formed. But there's a problem with this theory. The planets in our solar system are all made of different ingredients. The ingredients change depending on where a planet is created. Think of the different planets as barbecue sauce. It's kind of like if you had a barbecue that was vinegar based, you'd go, oh yeah, that's North Carolina. But if you have it and it's more of a, more of a thick red sauce, you go, oh sure, St. Louis. We have a similar situation in the inner solar system where you know, the various rocks that were made from here on the Earth, on Mars, the Moon, are all roughly the same kinds of things but the flavors of the atoms that make up those minerals can be slightly different. The unique flavor of each planet is created by different types of chemical elements. Mars has more oxygen-18 than Earth. Venus has less argon-40. Each world has a distinctive mix of ingredients a signature sauce. So, what about the moon? If the Earth is different from Mars and Mars is different from the asteroids, we might expect that Thea, the object that ran into the Earth, should have had this different composition flavor than the Earth. When Thea collided with the Earth, the impact blasted trillions of tons of material into space but a glancing blow would cause more damage to Thea. So most of the ingredients that make up the moon should have come from Thea. And that would show up today in the composition of the moon. But it doesn't. The Earth and moon 
are made of very similar ingredients. So the glancing impact theory could be wrong. The way to potentially solve the issue of the similar compositions and flavors of the Earth and Moon is as a result of the impact, they really mixed up their materials very well together. And so there are similar compositions today because of how well they mixed. New research from planetary formation expert, Professor Sarah Stewart, suggests Thea didn't just hit Earth with a glancing blow. It smashed into our planet head on. Our model for the origin of the moon still begins with a giant impact. The energy of the impact generates a shock wave that travels through both objects. That shock wave deposits enough energy to melt and partially vaporize both bodies. But now we know that giant impacts make a new astronomical object called a synestia. A synestia is a donut-shaped spinning ring of molten and vaporized rock. The impact that formed it released so much energy, the synestia could have glowed as bright as the sun. The surface of the structure that you observe would be magma rain clouds. And so it would be glowing orange hot, and it would look like a swirling ball of gas. The cloud of material swirled for hundreds of years with the remains of Thea and the Earth inside. Like ingredients in a planetary cocktail. Everything mixes together and you form a huge cloud of material. So it's not as simple as building a small disk and building the moon. Gradually, the synestia cooled and the donut-shaped cloud shrank. Rock vapor condensed into a liquid, then solid rock. Earth began to reform. And it didn't recondense into a single, more massive Earth. Instead, there was enough material at the fringes of this blob to condense into its own object, which became the Moon. Earth took the lion's share of material. The Moon lived off scraps. But it did grab enough material to slowly emerge from a hail of molten rock. You would have had two really hot, mostly molten bodies in really close orbits to each other. If you were a Martian during the time of the young Earth and Moon, four billion years ago, when you look back at the Earth and Moon, it would have looked like a double planet to you. And because the Moon and Earth formed together from a synestia, their chemical compositions are almost identical. But the similarities of the twin molten worlds were more than skin deep. Similar to the Earth, the Moon just after its formation would have been very, very hot. You would have had a really hot molten body solidifying at the surface, building a crust, and solidifying from the outside in. As the Earth cooled, an atmosphere formed, and life evolved. New lunar data suggests the Moon may have followed the same path. So, was the Moon once home to life? <laughs>